Can we begin the service by singing nations and modern? 1st lesson is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 1 through to 11. Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 1. Let us hear the word of God. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has said by his own authority, but you will receive power from the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem 
and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Beloved, the word of God. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 15 through to 23. Ephesians chapter 1, reading from verse 15. Let us hear the word of God. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. The power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Beloved, the word of God. Gradual Hymn is ancient and body 300, 300.
God be with you. Hear the gospel of Christ according to Luke, chapter 24, reading at the 44th verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, verse 44 to 53. Luke 24, 44 to 53. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Beloved, the gospel of Christ. Let us sit. I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, I'm saying goodbyes is very painful. But today's goodbye is not an unhappy one because the ascension of Christ is not about an end. It is also about a beginning. The ascension is not about an end. It is about a beginning. And Christ's ascension is the culmination of God's plan for the world. His return to the Father with his mission accomplished. It's today that the Easter story ends. That is why sometimes some of us feel very sad when people think that just after Easter, it is ended. Else, Christ should be here physically with us. The Easter story ended on the ascension. So the ascension is a very important event in the life of the church. And I think, seriously, the church should have been full. But it's because we don't understand the Easter story. The Easter story, I repeat, ended on the ascension of Jesus Christ. Christ died three days he was in the tomb. On the third day he rose. They saw him go forth and come. He should have continually been seeing him physically. But he ascended unto the Father the end of it, and from there it became a beginning for the church. So on this day, we are reminded that we are called to be ambassadors of Christ from the mandate he gave to the disciples. We are called to be light and salt of the earth, just as Jesus was when he was with us in the flesh. And we must preach his words and his words only, and proclaim it with our lives. You and I should preach Jesus' words and proclaim it with our lives. 
And the ascensions bring, should bring back memories to us. Um, the flies, I'm happy they are um, whittled a little bit. Because during the ascension, we'll take the flies away. Most of the flies are away, so we'll have bare flies. Because the physical presence of Jesus Christ is no longer with us. And I stress on the word physical presence. Flesh and blood. We distinguish the Easter candle just after the reading of the gospel. It means that the risen Christ, who is hitherto represented by the Easter candle, the Paschal candle, physically by the Paschal candle, is no longer with us. He has gone to the Father. So the Mass will move on. We'll move on with the liturgy. But where is Christ now? He is also present in the Eucharist. That is the faith of the Anglo-Catholic Church. Christ is ascended into the Father, but he is physically present in the Eucharist. That's why I said it is not an end, but a beginning. So we can feel Christ. That's why when we eat the body and blood of Christ, he strengthens us physically and spiritually. So Jesus, though in heaven, is represented here with us in the sacramental sign of the bread and the wine. We had our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And it tells us that they were gazing into the skies, awaiting Jesus when he left. We have work to do, my dear brothers and sisters, from the Lord. We just not have to gaze into the skies. We have this phrase we say, somebody whose head is in the skies. Somebody whose head is in the skies. Somebody who, who is a dreamer, just dreams. But we are not living in the land of dreams. We are living in the land of work. We should not be speculating about the timing of Jesus' return. You know, so many people have been scanning Old Testament prophecy and they've been theorizing about the rapture and what have you. But we should be doing the work the Lord has commissioned us to do instead of theorizing about the rapture. Many times you say, oh, let's go for this pastor. He's very good. He tells us about the rapture. What are you doing? The rapture, yes, is important, but we have work to do. That's why the whole Christian life is about how you live your life to impact the life of others. Nothing more. No theories. The second reading from the letter of the Ephesians describes Christ as raised far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion. Jesus Christ is above every principality, every authority, every power, and every dominion. Because he's far above them. He's not to be identified, my dear Christian friends, today, I say, with any administration or regime. Let us identify Jesus Christ with any administration or regime. He's far above them. Jesus should not be identified with any tribe, culture, or generation. He's far above them. The risen Christ is greater than each and every principality, powers, and authority put together. So if you think you are afraid of the devil, then you have a problem. Because Jesus Christ is far above them, and you are a child of God. They are all subject to you in Jesus' name. Jesus is grace, his truth, his salvation is for everyone. They are not the possession of any one era, of any culture, of any country, of any party, of any school. Jesus is the possession of all of us. And we can go to him with all our needs, with all our joys, with all our sorrows. We have the gospel account of the ascension, where Jesus tells the apostles to preach the gospel to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Jesus had been with the disciples 40 days and 40, 40 days and 40 nights. Even though they were glad to see him, something had been changed about him when he resurrected. They didn't see many more miracles like he was doing, except that he appeared suddenly through ceilings, through floors, through doors, and unopened windows. And any time he spoke to them, he spoke to them 
about the disciples themselves. He told them he was giving them power. The power to forgive one another. The power to cast out evil. The power to handle snakes with their bare hands. The power. And he told them they will drink deadly poisoning and in this corrupt world and nothing will harm them. A whole lot of reassurance for the 40 days. Read scripture. All that Jesus was, was giving them a certain level of confidence because he knew he would be away. He told them that he will send them the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the advocate, the counselor, to be with them forever. It is not the will that you give four action pump guns to somebody forever. But the Holy Spirit to be with the disciples forever. And nothing happened until the 40th day when they met on the mountaintop of Bethany and he was taken up into heaven having given the promise that he should, they should remain in Jerusalem for the gift of the Holy Spirit and the mandate of proclaiming the good news from Jerusalem up to the other parts of the world. Baptizing those who believe. My dear brothers and sisters, all of us are Christians, followers of Jesus Christ. But how many of us take the mandate that he left us serious? Are we willing to pray and to spend time in the church? How many of us want to carry out the task of the church into our daily lives? You know, we live in a world which is not so far from good. We all know about the, um, the sin in this world, the snakes in this world, the corruption in this world. We know about the hunger in this world. The bribes which are asked for and taken. We know about the neglect. We know about the wars which go on in this world. We know about the deceptions around us. We know about how we treat widows and orphans. And many a time we use Jesus Christ as an excuse in sometimes doing these things. Because you see people defending war and using Christ as a base of defense of war, as a defense of deception. Sometimes we sit comfortably and say, after all, we are saved. And we fold our arms and we close our eyes and our ears. We are inactive in impacting the world. What are we doing? He gave us a mandate, my dear brothers and sisters. So what are we doing to transform this world as Christian people and make disciples of all people? Yes, you may not go out there with a mic to go and shout over the street corners that people should be saved. But in your small corner, in your workplace, in your family, in your neighborhood, what can you do to impact the life of your friends, your family, to tell people at your workplace so that they become Christians? Yes, that's also evangelism. We, yes, we are not of this world. Hallelujah to that and praise the Lord for that. But nothing is going to change in this world if we Christians are unconcerned. Nothing will change in this nation if we Christians are unconcerned. We have been given a mandate. We are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. My sisters and my brothers, do you know what Jesus Christ is doing just now at the right hand of God? Do you know? It is explained to us in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 13. Hebrews 10, 13. And it reads, He took his seat at the right hand of God, where he is waiting until his enemies are overcome by us. He took his seat at the right hand of God, where he is waiting until his enemies are overcome by us, you and I should overcome the enemy. So he's waiting for us. He has left us in this world so that we have to overcome the enemies of sin, the enemies of hunger and corruption, faithlessness, the enemies of immorality, the enemies of laws of values and principles. That is why he has not come. 
And that is why he told us, I leave you as salt. I leave you as yeast. I leave you as light. He's waiting for us. Let us not think piously and behave piously that we are waiting for his coming. Rather, he is waiting for us to complete the work that he has left us. Jesus is waiting for us, the church, to complete the work that he has left us. Then he will come. Then he will leave the throne. He will leave the right hand of God and return. The ascension, my dear brothers and sisters, also shows us where our real destiny is. You know, you and I are made from the earth. But we are not destined to remain on this earth forever. You see, anytime we attend funeral services and we preach these things, uh, we listen to them, and then after some few days we forget. You, were a, you are a day older today than yesterday. And tomorrow you'll be a day older. And the time is drawing near. When you leave this earth, I will leave you leave. So this is not our destiny. This is not our home. Heaven is our true home. And St. Thomas Aquinas says something. He, says, he calls it our patria or patria, our homeland. You know, sometimes we try to fashion a heaven on this earth. But we can't do it all. Nothing on earth will ever finally satisfy us. There's no food, there's no job, there's no marriage, there's no honor, there's no position, there's no home or neighborhood that can give us complete and final satisfaction. That is what the ascension tells us. That complete fulfillment comes only in God. And St. Augustine still says, here on earth our soul and heart are restless until they find their rest in God. Our souls, they are restless until they find their rest in God. Jesus is gone out of our sight, but not out of our lives. Let us continue to do the work that he left us as a church until he comes. There is work to do, my dear Christian friends, for us Christians to transform this world. Else, we'll be lazy in about. This morning when I was coming, I read, I heard from Father Blessed about this anecdote he gave. A young boy who was given cake to eat, a piece of cake. And he was joyously enjoying this cake until the middle somewhere. When he got, he started weeping whilst eating the cake. And people could not phantom why he could weep, enjoying the cake and weeping at the same time. So they asked him, why do you weep when you're enjoying the cake? And he told them tearfully that the cake is so enjoyable, so sweet. But as he eats the cake, it is getting finished. As he eats the cake, it is getting finished. So it is, as we enjoy this earth, the end will come. So what do you do to meet that end? And I'm sure that's, that's, that's gave the adage, eating your cake and having it. You can't eat your cake and have it. We can enjoy the things of this world and think that we will not go. We will definitely go where Christ is gone. But when the time comes, will the Father tell you, O oh, good and faithful servants, enter into the joy of your master? Is that what Christ will tell you? Let us search our hearts. And then, let us get up then, go and work. The ascension shows us where our real destiny lies. Where Jesus is gone, you and I hope to follow. Our real home is with God because heaven is our homeland. 
Until then, you and I are just tenants on earth and we are renting the earth. So let us do the work that we are given to do. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us turn to a very short time of prayer, my dear Christian friends. When our risen Savior ascended into heaven, angels reminded his disciples that he will come back again. Until he comes, we continue his work by praying for all peoples and their needs. So at this moment, I ask your prayer, my dear Christian friends, for the church on earth that we, the church, would keep to our evangelical mission of making disciples of all nations. We are too much more in miracles and the spectacular now than in preaching salvation. Let us pray that the church will keep to the mission of preaching salvation and evangelizing people instead of miracles. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all who are so attached to this earth. Anyone who is attached to this world will regret when it's time for the calling to eternal life in heaven. So let us pray that we will all divest ourselves from the attachments to this earth and think spiritual as well so that when the time comes, it's with a joy that will respond that to that glorious homecoming. Let us pray to the Lord. It is important that Christians will come to maturity of faith in the fullness of the risen Christ. So we know Christ who he is, the power of his salvation. So let us ask God to help us, that you and I will really understand the mission and purposes of Christ on this earth. And so to live it to the glory of our Father. Let us pray to the Lord. May we pray for the leaders of the world. May they realize that they must give an account of their work to Christ Jesus because he will come to judge the living and the dead. Let us pray for the leaders of the world and let us pray for the leaders of our nation, Ghana. Let us ask God to raise us to an awareness of the work that he has left for us Christians as individuals to do for him whilst he sits at the right hand of God waiting to put his enemies under our feet. So we work the works of God whilst on this earth. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray for everyone who has access to pray for him or her. We'll pray for the sick, we'll pray for the needy, we'll pray for the bereaved, we'll pray for widows and orphans, we'll pray for refugees and prisoners, we pray for those who are even entangled in their own faults and actions. Let us ask God to come to their aid. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the faithful departed that they may ascend to the glory with Christ, our priest and our king. And finally, let us bring our own prayers before 
are risen and ascended Christ. May he meet us at our point of our need. And may our prayers ascend as incense unto him as we unfurl them before his altar and before his throne. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. God, our Father, your Son is now seated at your right hand, enthroned in eternal glory. We have made our petitions through him, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. My dear Christian friends, our risen Christ is ascended into the heavens until he comes. Let us do the work that he has given us. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us exchange the sign of peace. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Please humble your heads and ask for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you on this day when His only Son ascended into heaven to prepare a place for you. After His resurrection, Christ was seen by His disciples when He appears as judge. May you be pleasing forever in his sight. Amen. Amen. You believe that Jesus has taken his seat in majesty at the right hand of the Father. May you have the joy of experiencing that he is also with you to the end of time according to his promise. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you this ascension day and always. Amen. Happy Ascension Day. The Mass ascended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and do his works. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is Ancient and Modern Eight. Ancient and Modern Eight.